A massive vitamin D human study has just been published in the New England Journal of Medicine with over 25,000 people over a five-year period. And this is a big one with crucial results that will significantly impact how we view vitamin D supplements. And stick around until the end because I somewhat disagree with the study's final conclusions. Let's get into it. The paper is titled Supplemental Vitamin D and Incident Fractures in Midlife and Older Adults. It starts by saying that fractures are a major public health problem, especially among older adults. An estimated 53.6 million Americans have osteoporosis or weakening of the bones, and vitamin D supplements are widely recommended to the general population as a means to promote bone health. However, data on these supplements to prevent fractures, it is conflicting, with some medical societies recommending vitamin D intakes of at least 800 to 2,000 international units per day for adults 50 years of age or older to make sure that their blood vitamin D levels are above 30 nanograms per milliliter. The trouble is though, results from randomized controlled studies investigating the effects of vitamin D supplements on fractures, they've been inconsistent, with some trials providing evidence for benefit, others showing no effect, and some studies even showing harm. For example, in 2021, the US Preventative Services Task Force it found no effect of supplemental vitamin D on fracture incidents among people with low levels of vitamin D. And the Institute of medicine identified an increased risk of fractures with both low and high levels of blood vitamin D. And they emphasize the need for more research from large randomized controlled trials. And that brings us onto this one, the VITAL trial. This is a massive randomized controlled study that looked at 2,000 international units of vitamin D supplements and it compared it to a placebo. And the rationale for using this dose would be that we wanted to aim for vitamin D blood levels of approximately 40 nanograms per milliliter. So just for some context, with vitamin D blood levels, if it's below 30, that's classified as low levels of vitamin D or insufficient levels of vitamin D. The study had close to 26,000 participants and they were followed up for an average of 5.3 years. And the primary thing that this study was looking at was total fractures, non-vertebral fractures as in non-spinal fractures, and hip fractures. So what did the study find? Well, before the study began, they measured the vitamin D blood levels and they found that the average level was 30 units so that means that a lot of the population actually have low levels of vitamin D so because of the role that vitamin D plays in the body it's reasonable to think that vitamin D supplements they should improve bone health and during the course of the study the group that took the vitamin D supplements they increased their blood level from 30 to just over 40 units so did that improve bone health and reduce fractures well, unfortunately, no, it didn't. There was no difference between the vitamin D group and the placebo group for total fractures. And there was no other differences here in the fracture groups at all. And that's a really surprising result. But what happens when we have a look at the people that had really low levels of vitamin D and then started taking the vitamin D supplements? Surely they saw an improvement in their bone strength. Strangely, that's not what the study found. There was no significant effect on fracture incidence between the vitamin D and placebo groups according to their baseline blood levels. So what this means is that even with people that had a vitamin D blood level below 12, when they started supplementing vitamin D, there was no significant improvement in their bone strength. There was no reduction in fractures. And this is a pivotal finding because it was suggested that the effects of supplemental vitamin D, it might only be limited to those with existing low levels of vitamin D in their blood. But that's not again what the study found. The study also looked at people that were taking other supplements. So some of the participants Participants, they were taking calcium supplements and even in those people there was no significant improvement in their bone strength. And that led to the authors of the study concluding that in this randomized controlled study, supplemental vitamin D, it did not lower the risk of fractures among the generally healthy midlife and older adults. So that's a shocking finding and not at all what we were expecting. And on the back of those results, there was an editorial that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It's titled, Vital Findings, a Decisive Verdict on Vitamin D Supplementation. And here is where I somewhat disagree with the overall conclusions. It starts by saying, 
saying an estimated one third or more of US adults 60 years of age or older take vitamin D supplements. Yet controversy continues about its overall benefits. And on the back of the disappointing findings around bone strength, they say that taken together, the vital study, which is the one that we looked at, and supplementary studies show that vitamin supplements do not have important health benefits for the general population of older adults, even in those with low levels of vitamin D. And this is because the results from the vital study, they show that vitamin D supplementation does not prevent cancer, cardiovascular disease, it does not prevent falls, it doesn't improve cognitive function, it doesn't reduce atrial fibrillation, or improve stroke outcomes, and it doesn't reduce knee pain. Now we were correct in getting excited about the potential of vitamin D supplements. We could see that from observational studies, low levels of vitamin D, they were associated with weak bones or osteoporosis. So it was thought that we were going to see improvements in bone strength with supplementing vitamin D. But we can now see that vitamin D supplements, they do not reduce the risk of fractures. This analysis goes on to say that more than 10 million vitamin D tests are performed each year in the United States and the results from these tests often include the classification of vitamin D as insufficient if your levels are below 30 and deficient if your levels are below 20. And this has led to a lot of people supplementing with vitamin D. But on the back of all of these disappointing results, this article says that there is no justification in measuring vitamin D levels in the general population or treating to a target blood level. Taken together, all of these disappointing results suggest that doctors should stop doing vitamin D blood tests or recommending vitamin D supplements, and people should stop taking vitamin D supplements to prevent major diseases or extend life. Now, overall, I do disagree somewhat with this conclusion. We do have a meta-analysis that was published in the British Medical Journal showing that for people that have got low levels of vitamin D, when they start supplementing with vitamin D, they reduce the chance of upper respiratory tract infections. So there is an important role that vitamin D plays with the immune system. That's one of the big reasons why a supplement with with a thousand units of vitamin D. Also, the vital trial that we've gone through, it doesn't take into account things like vitamin K2 supplements or magnesium supplements. There is a possible synergistic effect that we might see with those supplements. Personally, since I spend a lot of time indoors, I will continue my vitamin D supplements of a thousand units per day. I'll also continue my vitamin K2 supplements and magnesium supplements. And again, with those supplements, all I'm trying to do is reach those optimum levels. I'm not advocating for mega dosing. I do think that future studies need to have a look at those combined supplements to see if they do have that synergistic effect. What I do agree with though, and I've mentioned this on the channel a couple of times, is that I don't see the benefit in vitamin D blood tests. The data simply does not support it, despite what other social media influencers will have you believe. A big thank you to the patrons and channel members, and thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin clinical study. They are a health research organization and to benefit from the ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.